This is the home of an ethnic Kazakh carpenter. Like other ethnic minorities, Kazakhs have rich folk customs and art. They present the story behind their myths, legends, and idioms through carpentry and turn wood into artwork. Though ordinary wooden articles are made of concrete and durable raw materials, true Kazakh carpentry employs wood plug fixtures and doesn't use nails. The efficient employment of such techniques is a defining feature of a skilled Kazakh carpenter. Jialangashi village in the Altai prefecture of the Uyghur Autonomous Region is located on China's northwest border. Its geographical location and special climate make for a nomadic life for many locals. Despite this, many residents no longer live in yurts, but brick houses with utilities. They no longer have to move. Kazakh people attach great importance to newly born babies, a population spread throughout a very large area with distant and scattered residences has led to a rich nursery experience with a prairie touch. A cradle ritual is maintained until a baby is between seven days to a month old. This is one of the most important rituals for the Kazakh people. Every baby grows up hearing lullabies in the cradle and all cradles are wooden Kazakh cradles, both sturdy and convenient. The Kazakh nomads carry on their traditional culture. Exquisite wooden cradles, quaint wooden beds, and smooth wooden tables and chairs present a strong ethnic identity. Woodwork found in local households is all unmistakably Kazakh. The creator of many of these articles is 52-year-old Medelahan Isaacan from Jialangashi village. I've been interested in carpentry since I was nine. I used to make all my wooden chairs and toys. My great-grandfather was a carpenter. Medalihan's great-grandfather was the best carpenter in the village and excelled in making all kinds of woodwork. A natural disaster hit Jelangashi village and its villagers lived in poverty. Medalihan's great-grandfather made a living solely through his exquisite carpentry and managed to provide for the entire family. However, Medelahan's great-grandfather didn't pass on his knowledge and skills to his grandfather. Medelahan's parents died when he was just five years old. It was his uncle who instead mastered the skill and passed it on. My uncle was an honest man. When I was little, someone from the village wanted a pair of wooden doors. But another carpenter was also contending for the job, which annoyed him. I wanted to make for him the wooden doors, but he refused 
asking me not to waste the raw materials. The next day, when he went out to the summer pasture, I made two nice wooden doors. My uncle was content with my work, and we got the order. I was only nine years old. The young Medellahan experienced making woodwork for the first time. He became his uncle's helper and they began working together. Medellahan has been interested in carpentry since then and continued to master the craft. When Medalahan was 20, he completed his first order. It was a double bed for two young Kazakh newlyweds. He even studied the structure of a traditional Kazakh bending bed from the local museum and improved on it to make his work more perfect. His drafts were based on the many bending beds he had seen. After studying enough traditional Kazakh wooden beds, Medalahan recreated the wooden bed in his own style. He rounded the bed's headboard and added ethnic wave and pedal patterns, making the marital bed more elegant and pleasing than the traditional types. He spent 60 hours making the bed. When the bed was presented after three days, it was highly praised by everyone in the village. What pleased Medalahan the most was the fact that he earned 150 yuan from it. This was considered a huge amount of money in the 1980s, equivalent to one's annual income. Since that time, his business has grown. When my villagers got married, I made them wooden beds, wooden plates, and wooden bowls. Newly wedded couples typically treasured the handmade cutlery given to them by their parents. These were considered family treasures. Most were durable. Over six months of hard work, Medalahan reproduced traditional Kazakh bending beds. He also designed and made beds with headboards featuring dog and deer patterns, which are popular among nomads. Medalahan's work was in great demand. Customers from all over China, Mongolia and Kazakhstan, along with his regular customers, were all attracted by his fame. Young Medalahan not only focused on making marital woodwork, he also devoted himself to improving traditional everyday Kazakh woodwork. His wooden plates, wooden bowls and wooden spoons are rich with ethnic characteristics and many orders were placed for them. Though he didn't generally work over the winter, that winter he was extremely busy.
There's a reason the locals from Altay treasure woodwork. There's a type of wooden bowl called halajia with a special origin and function. It's used by women in need of nutritious food during childbirth confinement. They're served mutton with broth in halajia wooden bowls. These bowls are then stored away after confinement and can't be used by others. The bowl's purposes have been served when the women give birth to their babies. Every Kazakh mother tells her children the story of the Halajia bowl and children see it as the mother bowl. As lifestyles changed, the Kazakhs started to use Chinese bowls. In recent years, Kazakhs have begun to believe their wooden raw materials are no longer contaminated and have gone back to preferring the craftsmanship of their woodwork. The divine status of Halajia bowls has now since been restored. The Kazakh live in the vast pastures between northern Mount Tianshan and the edge of Jungar Basin and live primarily nomadic existences. Influenced by snow and livestock, ram horns and snowflakes are the most commonly used traditional patterns for locals. Inspired by the traditional Kazakh patterns, Medelahan reinvests them with new glamour. The traditional patterns are painted on everyday furniture, but they're precisely carved in his work. He combines local history and tradition with daily life, making the patterns artful and conveying the will and spirit of the local through his woodwork. There are ram horn patterns on all our things, carpets, clothing, furniture, containers, musical instruments and trappings. I like ram horn patterns, so I've always carved them into my work from when I first started making woodwork. Medelihan makes many containers, plates, bowls, spoons and teapots, all of which are frequently used in daily life. They're of great value and highly practical. Handmade utensils are always elegant. In 1996, Medelihan was hired by a Pingyuan tree farm as their senior carpenter. Six years later, the tree farm went bankrupt and 41-year-old Medelahan was unemployed. Medelahan spent most of his time at home whilst he was unemployed. He only went out to patrol the border twice a month between the 20th and the 24th boundary monument. During his patrol, he noticed the wooden sculptures floating along the river were decayed and this broke his heart. He saw them as his old friends and he now had a new idea. He planned his life all over again. He again admitted to himself that his passion lies in carpentry and this time, he swore to himself that he would never abandon it. Several years ago, Medelahan viewed carpentry as a hobby. 
Now, his woodwork is extremely popular in the market. He frequently cannot keep up with demand. A trader from Usu in Mongolia once asked for a thousand wooden bowls to be done in 40 days. Medalahan faced a dilemma. Though large orders guarantee good income, Medalahan cannot mass produce that many bowls within such a short period of time as all his bowls are handmade. Medalahan decided to reduce the order to 200 wooden bowls instead. Making woodwork is not as easy as it appears as the technological process is extremely complicated. The wood needs to be first cut and made into an embryo. It then needs to be polished by sandpaper. The smoothness of the surface is judged by finger touch and all burrs should be eliminated during this step. The wood is then boiled in salt water for half an hour to increase its rot and crack resistance. Later on, it will be They can better feel its smoothness. According to Medellahan, these procedures can't be rushed. After the wooden container is soaked in hot butter, Medellahan likes to whisper to his creations like a friend. Woodwork made using these procedures retains its original color and luster. It is toxin-free, durable, antiseptic, and anti-cracking. I love being a carpenter. I can concentrate on designing and making my work. It requires fine workmanship and I put my heart and soul into it. Medellahan has his own perception of his works and entrusts them with characteristics. They're no longer ordinary replicas. Some are exquisite, some are simple and quaint. They're all extremely tasteful. Medellahan has produced a lot of work over the years he has made over 40 different types of Kazakh handicrafts. His persistence and firmness of will have brought him endless inspiration and creative power.
This is my favorite work. It's a unique foldable chair, popular among clients. It's made using only one piece of wood. This seemingly old-fashioned foldable chair is made using only one piece of pine wood. It consists of different joints which overlap and strengthen each other. The chair face is formed when the chair legs go across. No nail, screw or glue is used on the chair, only wooden wedges. Today, Medellahan has to fulfill another task. He's not only a happy carpenter, but he's also a sentry. He's been responsible for assisting with patrolling the border for more than 20 years. Medellahan has traveled over the border between China and Kazakhstan through his work. He always seeks his raw materials from forest and farm. Medellahan always seeks raw materials for his woodwork after the patrol. As China promotes eco-friendly construction and environmental protection, Medellahan never attempts to harm the forest. He typically picks out dead wood or floating wood on hills or in streams. It's impossible to fell trees without the government's consent. With their consent, he'll get what he needs for where he wants to go. Though the technological process is complicated in and of itself, lack of raw materials makes processing times even longer. Sometimes, Medellahan can't find suitable wood at all. Poplars and birches are exclusively found here. The burrs on these trees can be cut off without harming the tree's life. Most of Medellahan's works are made of tree burrs. Medellahan is strict with choosing his raw materials. He usually buys wood at the markets, cuts off tree burrs, or uses floating wood from the Irtish River. Tree burrs and floating wood are typically solid and durable. Medellahan is able to make use of their original shape and brings art to ordinary wood. The 49-year-old carpenter Bula Muhan lives in Adeki village, two kilometers southwest of Medellahan's home. Bula Muhan started learning carpentry, cobbler making and horse gear making when he was 17. There's a few simple and unsophisticated pieces of wooden furniture at his home. Most of Bula Muhan's daily utensils are made of plastic and aluminium. These mass-produced items are like fast food for a fast-paced life, invading many family homes and causing Kazakh wood art to fall into decay. Bula
Abdullah Mohan is no longer involved with woodwork making. For him, hand making woodwork is too complicated and time consuming. The rewards are not worth the labor. Bulu Mohan now oversees his livestock and takes care of his farmland. He's responsible for six acres of corn, 40 acres of small glutinous millet, and hundreds of cattle and sheep. Even during the winter season or the low agricultural season, Bulu Mohan scarcely picks up his carpentry tools anymore. This is a small cutter Bula Mohan bought in 1992 for making horse equipment. At that time, cutters like this was considered advanced. He paid a lot of money for this cutter and shipped it back home. Many of the saddles in Adeki village were made by Bula Mohan. Bulu Mohan's warehouse covers less than 15 square meters. He proudly shows us the equestrian equipment he used to make. Very few people still rely on horses to travel. Instead, people prefer motorbikes. The saddle making craft is likely to become extinct soon. As nomadic lifestyles change, traditional culture is vanishing. This is also a concern for Medalahan. There used to be a few carpenters in the village. Like me, they began with making wooden doors and windows and then started making wooden handicrafts. They changed their occupations and they were not happy with their income. Now, I'm the only carpenter here making wooden handicrafts. There are more than a thousand excavated objects and exhibits of folk culture at the Habahur County Museum. Medellahan's wooden handicrafts are also displayed in the folk culture hall. This is the pointing bed he made in 2009 with camel bones on the surface of the bed. His bending bed features ram horn patterns with strong Kazakh characteristics. There's a typical Kazakh wooden cradle on display. The cradle beam is in the form of a shotgun, symbolizing the courage of the Kazakh people. Medelahan has presented Kazakh cultural characteristics and the Kazakh spirit perfectly with his craft. Medalahan had a wish. He wanted to pass down his skills and craft to a true lover of woodwork.
His son, Huan, didn't understand his father's desires at first as he didn't see what his father was achieving with his wooden creations. He later finally understood his father's intentions. He realized traditional Kazakh woodwork not only brought his father honor, but it was also a form of cultural inheritance. Huan started to learn from his father as his work became more popular. <laughs> now, Medalahan's wish has come true. His son Huan has learned carpentry for three years. He has inherited his father's talents. He has not only learned the skill of carpentry, but also creatively applies animal bones in his furniture making. Huan has now received recognition at the Uyghur prefecture level for his Kazakh animal bone furniture making. I'm satisfied with my life. I often tell my son to keep pace with the times. Work hard and don't fall behind. In order to help Medelihan pass on his craft, the township and county governments have provided funding for him to build his own workshop so that he no longer has to use his home as a workshop. Medelahan and his son believe they're on an important mission. They see traditional carpentry as one of the ways to showcase ethnic Kazakh culture. They not only persistently stick to their occupation, but they also have won people's admiration and appreciation for Kazakh carpentry. In April 2013, in order to better support Medelahan's work and help him to pass on his carpentry skills, the local township and county governments allocated a land of 30 acres for his new workshop. Every day, Medelahan comes to the foundation of the future workshop and continues to build the workshop himself. Altyazı M.K.